So I'm Nico Rivera. I'm a computer hacker from Illinois, specifically from Oak Park. I went to Oak Park River Forest High School. I skateboard. I know Corey. I'm skateboarding. Start off by telling us like how you got into programming and like how oh, like yeah. transitioned into hacking, I guess. So in high school, they didn't really offer too many programming classes. I fell into a group of friends that knew a lot of computer stuff, and we'd like to play play like a ton of pranks on people. So like. You can open a PowerShell and just like shut off hundreds of computers in the classroom. You can shut off the teacher's computer, which is pretty fun. So I think from there, it transitioned into, um, in high school, um, I like installed a RAT, which is a virus on the school server at a OPRF. And then I was like changing my grades, changing attendance. And I was like, yeah, I was just doing like bad stuff. Then I got, well, I didn't get caught for that. I got caught for, I was hosting video game servers on their servers. And then they found out, and then they kind of somehow traced it back to me. But I was making money off the ad revenue for people who joined those servers and watched the ads. Oh my God. So I was making like maybe like $100 every like two weeks, which is pretty nice. Like in high school, it's fun money. Yeah. Right? Like I um, didn't have a job, so whatever. Um, from there, it pretty much, I, I like got in trouble, had to go to the office. They asked me a ton of questions, and I met this really smart dude who was probably part of like some federal agency that I thought I was going to get in a bunch of trouble with. He was like, no, you, you know, you can major in this in college and like do all this stuff for a living. Like it pays really well. And I was like, oh, that sounds like real, like a lot of fun. And by paid many, like really well, I thought he meant like, you know, like 60K a year. Then I like go into college and I'm like, oh, you can make 100K a year for this. This is amazing. And it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's mostly I got into. It. It's just mostly like friends, fun, like research stuff and like hacking stuff at school, OPRF specifically. <laughs> so what like what made you want to really dig deep into actually getting into the nitty gritty of, of hacking? So I didn't know what I wanted to do for college. Um, I was just kind of like messing around with stuff in high school, like you know maybe pottery or maybe like something artistic. And then I was like, there's no money in that stuff, which sucks, right? Like I think it's really cool. And I was like, oh maybe I'll go into teaching. Um, that didn't work out, so I went to like some community college and was studying like a couple random topics, and I found out computer science was like a topic I could go into and look into. Um, so I looked into that, and somebody convinced me to go to security anyways when I got there. So they were like, security is going to be the next big thing, and you know, you're already focused on it, and you're really good at it. And I was like, oh, cool, but I don't want like my fun stuff to like correlate with you know work stuff because then it becomes boring, right? So. Uh, going to security and uh, everything just kind of like worked out from there. I started like getting scholarships, started becoming like a straight A student and like all this stuff. So yeah, it's, it's worked out really well, surprisingly. I guess, um, tell us about the first time you got contacted to travel for, for all Oh, uh, so, so I went to this uh, big hacking convention in Vegas called DEF CON. And um, I did a competition called DEF CON's Car Hacking Competition. It's like a huge deal. Pretty much all you do there is you, you go there. Uh, they have like a bunch of what they call like flags, uh, which is like secret codes, like hidden inside stuff usually. Um, you go and you like capture those flags by like decrypting something or hacking something. So I, the physical challenge was like hack into a car, like you're kidnapped, thrown into a car. They legitimately kidnap you. They like tie you up, put a mask over your face, and they like zip tie you pretty much. So you have to escape from zip ties, which pretty much all you do is you go like this. And when they zip tie you, it gives you extra room. So when you go like this, you can slip out. Mm -hmm. um, and then plus I have handcuffed shivs in my wallet always uh, <laughs> to like escape from police, which is legal in Illinois. So cut that. <laughs> So pretty much I, I go to that challenge and um, I place really well. Like people usually have a team of six doing stuff and I'm a team of one and I place fifth. So I get approached by uh, some people that were like, hey, you know, we're trying to run this car hacking event for a company and, you know, they're like paying us to do this stuff. And I've heard of this company before. It's called Bug Crowd. Mm -hmm. And uh, all they pretty much do is like Bug Crowd hires a bunch of random computer computer hackers and they like, pretty much say, hack into this site, you get X amount of time to do it, and it's legal. And then we'll pay you to do it. So there's like hundreds of people from around the world usually hacking into this stuff. When I got approached, there was like, there's not many car hackers. You're like one of the only people that do this stuff. So um, like I think it was like one of 10 people that did it uh, like well. Uh, and I had just started doing it for three months. So they were like, come out and hack 
hack some cars for this company. Um, so I go out to this event and hacking cars and the company's really cool. Everyone's correspondent very well. I meet one of my best friends there uh, whose name is Minty, and he's probably one of the most renowned researchers in car hacking, which I didn't know at the time. Um, so we find this like big exploit that affects like 10 years worth of vehicles that we're like able to pretty much just like steal cars off the street in like under two minutes. And like these are like $60,000 cars, right? So it's a huge deal. Um, <laughs> so this company's really happy and now they just like consistently invite me back to do more stuff and have a lot more fun with different things. So yeah. So... Um, if you're allowed to say it, was that your first time ever hacking into a car on that first, uh, uh, so no, but we won't go into the details of the other, uh, instances of hacking into cars for like kind of fun and stuff. Though there's like, I'm sure you know what an internet troll is, right? Um, like what do you mean? So like internet trolls are like people who like play really messed up pranks over the internet. So, like, uh, did you see the uh, billboard hacking thing? Yeah. You just, like, cut a clip in that in this video. Um, those are pretty much internet trolls. They just do it for, like, the, the lels, like, to just mess around. They don't... Well, I mean, there's a, there's a partial meaning behind the billboard hacking one. Like, that one is... That one's, like, a 10-year-old thing that everyone has known about for a long time. Mm. And companies refuse to fix, like, billboard signs being hacked for some reason, so... There was a serious issue of a botnet going around and infecting stuff called the Mirai botnet. And I assumed that the reason they're hacking these billboards is like they're trying to make a statement saying, hey, these can be hacked. These can be used to attack government websites and like a bunch of other organizations like hospitals and stuff. You should probably fix this. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I just would hack into cars for fun mostly. And like I never knew what my limitations were um, like a year ago. So, like, hacking into a ton of random things was just kind of. I feel like necessary to try. Mm -hmm. Even like now, there's still like tons of things I still haven't touched. Like I want to hack into planes next, and I've already gotten in contact with a couple of companies about doing that, which would be really cool. Wow. It'd be a pretty big step. I think um, it communicates the same way as a car, and it also communicates wirelessly. So like, why not, right? So yeah. that'd be a be pretty fun. Wow, that's that's really wow. Um, so do you do you feel like like you're developing like a passion for security like over time or is it just all just kind of just like new and, and fun? So I think um, I think each time I do something new with security. So like I've always had a passion for security in general. Like skateboarding wise, I used to break into places just to skateboard at them. I was like the kid that made underground skate park that nobody knew about except like Nick and like two other people. Mm. And it was pretty much like this whole giant underground space under a Chipotle yeah, that you could go into. Never got to go. There's no alarms in that building, so it's like super easy to get in there, and I've pretty much disabled like every other security functionality in that building, so like there's literally no way to get caught. Um, other than that, like it's a, it's a pretty good time to like, it was always fun to like break into places, right? So I got older and I was like, you know, like if there's a job to being a criminal, then I'd do that well. <laughs> and like, I wonder if I could do it legally, so get into security stuff and every time I like break into something it's always just like this is a fun new thing that I've never gotten to like hack into or break into so like let's try it it's always an interesting time it's like a big challenge usually to like learn it so you just do like a ton of research on it like you mostly just play with it you find things that like make it work find something that find something that breaks it right and then exploit the thing that breaks it to make it work if that makes sense that's super interesting it's mostly just like a process. Like if your camera broke, I'm sure you knew how to like put it all back together, right? So it's the same thing with like anything else. If you study it enough, you'll learn how to put it all back together and take it all apart. Mm -hmm. Just by like learning its in and ins and outs, it's like the best thing you can do. Computers specifically, right? Like if you know how to build a computer and you know that like a computer has a CPU, a GPU, and like RAM and all this other shit that make it work, uh, mostly everything else does, right? So like. It's just, it all looks differently on different components and stuff, or on different levels. Ask him about Ghost Dog and the kit that he used to break in the car. you see seen that, right? Which one, the when they drive the car remotely, like wirelessly? No, no, it was just Ghost Dog, it was a movie. And he would just go up to the car, and he had... Like a box? Yeah. You could do that. And it... It'll lock the car, right? 
everything. Yeah, yeah, you can. Sorry. My my one of my best friends. Uh, it's just radio stuff. Like imagine like how your Wi-Fi router works. Um, when you push the button to unlock the door in your car to remote start your car, essentially it's doing. Um, it's just going over like a Wi-Fi network, right? But it's just something your phone can access because it travels over a different frequency, frequency right? Yeah, yeah, like higher, like higher being like 500 hertz or lower being like, um, like two hertz, which is 2.5 is like Wi-Fi. You and I, that stuff now, yeah, there's uh, something called the Blade RF, um, okay. a Blade RF, or even like a like a SDR. I think I have one in my bag. I can show you in a minute. Um, there's like these little USBs that you can like record like radio frequencies, and then you can replay it and just throw it at a car. Um, some cars will unlock and start, whereas like some cars they'll have like this thing called a rolling code, where pretty much you have a number on the car and you have a number on your key fob, and those will keep changing over time. Mm -hmm. The car will essentially tell the key fob to like verify yourself. I want to make sure you're real, and the key fob will respond with the code. Once you push the button, the key fob just sends the code, and then they do the same challenge type where it's like verify yourself again, blah, blah, blah. Um, if the code's only like five digits long, it's super easy to crack that. So you can generate every possible code and you can just throw it all at the car at once and then do anything. Yeah, that's like a legitimate, um, it's like a legitimate like attack scenario. I have one of uh, this dude on Twitter going up to a door with this white box and he's scanning for the key in the house and he's like looking for it and he gets it and he gets the car to start and like unlock. It's pretty cool. Any scary, weird situations that you've gotten into or gotten out of that, like, you feel comfortable telling the camera, like, that have to do with hacking? Um, I got into a fight on the internet with some, like, random person, and I don't know, like, who he knew or something. They pretty much, like, tried to start, like, a full-scale attack on, like, my life, essentially. They were trying to, like, hack into my accounts. They tried to like DDoS my house. I, it was like some video game argument too. So pretty much like this dude's friend pretty much told this guy that I like DDoSed him and then my house started getting DDoSed. So I, you know, called my um, ISP, my internet service provider. And I was like, yo, change my IP. Um, someone trying to DDoS my house, whatever. Um, so pretty much this guy's DDoSing me. And I, you know, I have this firewall um, and I set it just to pretty much um, act like a, a, a SIM. And all it does pretty much is it, when an IP is detected, like sending a bunch of like requests or something, I pretty much just block it. Um, especially since I'm like, I'm not using like things like SSH or something random or like even like internet stuff on my home network. I'm not hosting anything. So I'm just blocking a bunch of IPs essentially. And um, so it works out well. So then I, you know, I'm like, okay, let me do my research on this guy. So I dox this guy. And I send all I send all of his information to him pretty much essentially. Like I find like his name, his address, where he lives, all this stuff, and I send it to him. And uh, he doesn't take that too well. So this goes on for like months at a time. Um, and then he he targets one of my friends, and then he docks him. And it just this situation just got out of control. Like it was literally like my friend's internet would go down for like months at a time, and it was just getting to the point where like it was it was getting bad. Like, we were threatening to, like, get social security numbers, get, like, all these things and, like, see all this information from each other or even, like, try to... We were just, like, talking about doing really bad shit, apparently, uh, or essentially. And uh, eventually, at the end of it all, we, like, settled down, became friends, and it was, like, the weirdest fucking thing I've ever had happen to me. Like, now me and this dude, like, hang out sometimes and talk on IRC, which is... um. Like internet relay chat, it's like some old method or XMPP, which is um like encrypted IRC pretty much. And uh, yeah, like that's pretty much it. That was like a weird instance. I think this and a little bit scary at the time too, because I was just like getting into it, and this was like, oh, I'm already getting into my first fight. Is this how everyone on the internet is? And yeah, no, thank God. Where do you see this going? Um, so right now I work at a hospital, and I pretty much just hack in all their systems there. Um, I'm allowed to, thank God, which is really fun. It's a great learning opportunity. It's probably like my first legitimate job outside of like some type of like restaurant or something. And I mean, I make money off the side by like computer hacking. It's super easy. Um, so I make a decent amount of money, but like this job pays me like a hell of money just to hack into their systems and write reports, which is pretty easy to do, pretty straightforward. So I pretty much set up like an automated system to do all that. Um, in the future, I mean, I want to go and get, like, my master's degree. I think it'd be pretty cool. 
I don't really know, I don't really see a reason of doing it. I just want to. Um, there is this big hacking certification, probably the hardest thing I will ever do in my life. It's called the OSCP, and it's the uh, Offensive Security Professional or Certified Professional Training and Certification. Um, I've literally heard of people like quitting their jobs for like a month and taking this exam. So it seems like that would be like the most challenging thing I could do. And then after you get that degree or that certification, you're pretty much set for, um, for life. Like you could hack for anyone at that point. You could red team for anyone. So, wow. yeah. So I think that's probably, um, maybe like two, three months. I'm going to try the OSCP. One of my friends is doing it now. So yeah, take a break from work or something if it's that necessary or school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But right now I'm undergrad, so I'm just in school studying. And trying to get out of college. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. You got scholarships, so you don't really have to worry about like debt or anything like that. Right? Yeah, that's that was really lucky. I think um, having like a government organization pretty much pay for school just for like sponsoring your work um, was awesome. They didn't like our project outcome, so we did. Uh, so I can talk about this now because you know, fuck them. Um, we pretty much did a thing on uh, voting machine hacking, and uh, one of our professors just wanted us to do it, so we were doing it for fun mostly. So we got a voting machine from a friend who knows a friend who got it off a train, um, or something like that. And um, we pretty much hacked into the voting machine, and we proved that like you could commit voter fraud on like a massive scale in like one state or one region. So. Exactly, right? So, you know, that's our faces, too. Um, It's really easy, and most of the voting machines that we had run on, uh, well, this one ran specifically on Windows XP, (laughs) which is really stupid. Um, The other ones we have run on, like, embedded 8, embedded Windows 8 and, like, 8.1, maybe, 8.1. Those are also awful, and you can also modify data on those. So, like, you know, we might do, like, a prank on the U.S. one day and be like, vote for President Dick Butt, and then have a bunch of hackers vote for them, and then hack and do a bunch of voting machines across the network. But uh, none of us are trying to go to jail soon, so it was just an idea. Um, yeah. Like the Harambe thing, like uh, eight-year-old kids did the vote for Harambe thing in like a different state, if you don't know. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. It's fucking hilarious. Eight-year-old kids? I, I don't know if they were eight. They were like preteens, though. Yeah. They weren't even like in high school yet, and they were like hack- hacking uh, voting machines. Wow. It's pretty funny. Wow. Yep. Well, yeah, this is like eye-opening stuff for like anyone who's like not in. This yeah, security. Um, yeah. This is like, <laughs> I'm like, whoa. Um, I guess since we're on the topic of game changers, uh, do you? Is there anything that you are allowed to talk to, like, or talk about that's like anything that's kind of on that scale? Uh, oh, like, um, so, fraud. yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe not even voter fraud. There's, like, tons of other things that you could hack into that affect, like, massive things. Um, I have a couple friends hacking into the GSM network, which is pretty much, like, your cell phone network. Mm-hmm. And they pretty much have access to anyone that uses GSM at this point. Like, they can literally view and modify traffic on every cellular network. They could like view phones within like a big fucking radius of Illinois. Um, Like almost all of Illinois is covered by it. Um, There's been instances of people hacking into satellites. Those people I'm friends with, they're really cool. They've like said hi to astronauts before. One of them was on the news for it, it was pretty funny. Um, Yeah. Uh, I have another friend that literally hacks... Okay, so you know how you can jailbreak iPhones? He's the one who made the jailbreaks for iPhones. Um, Yeah, he's awesome, dude. He's really weird, though. I don't get to talk to him much. When I do, he's always, like, just a strange guy to talk to. Um, To not get sued by Apple, he pretty much had to recreate all of Apple by hand on a fucking iPhone, which is, like, insane. So, like... All the code you see in the Apple phones, and especially when you jailbreak your phone, he wrote all of that code again just so he wouldn't get sued. And I'm pretty sure he's still getting sued from them, but they have no legitimacy on that. Um, so that probably won't go through. Um, so, like, anything... So I'm pretty much at the scale. Like, anything that goes to the GSM network, hackable. We're working on CDMA, which is, like, 
GSM would be like Sprint, AT&T, and like a couple other companies like Boost, fucking all those companies. Um, CDMA would be like Verizon, AT&T, and a bunch of other companies, like pretty much everything else. Um, and then like some government stuff over here, which would be cool to try at least. Um, I have other friends working on that. So, you know, like your phones aren't safe. Cars aren't safe, especially like new smart cars. Uh, I've been asked like a number of times to like go and hack into smart cars for companies. And I can pretty much tell you it's like the easiest thing in the world right now. Um, especially cars that have like a thing called V2V, which is something they're trying to push out, which is vehicle to vehicle communication. Mm -hmm. um, essentially cars just communicate with each other. Like in case of an accident, a car will say, there's an accident here. Like reroute these guys differently and call 911. Um, working on exploits for that. So I'm pretty much going to hack like maybe in the future like hundreds of thousands of cars at once, which would be awesome. Uh, most cars just communicate over like the cellular network now. Still pretty easy to hack though because we already own the cellular network. <laughs> um, what else have I hacked into? That's like pretty massive scale. Oh, SCADA systems, so like nuclear power plants. So me and my friends got to hack into a couple of SCADA systems. This was fucking awesome. I never knew how to do it before until I took a class at school. Um, one of our teachers bought a SCADA system and was like, here, have fun with this for like a week. So we made like this uh, fake power plant and we were like, oh, this is connected to a couple centrifuges and this is connected to a couple fans. Like turn off the fans, centrifuges overheat, boom goes the nuclear power plant, right? So um, I think we got the idea from something called Stuxnet, which actually, I don't think it blew up a power plant. I think it got really close to blowing up a power plant and was made by like the US and like Israel or something. Yeah, so we got the idea from that. So we were messing around with that. And then, you know, we just hack those. And at DEF CON in the same car hacking village, they have a um, like power plant hacking village and like grid hacking village and stuff. Um, so like hacking electrical grids and like, I think they're called like ICs, ICs or something or IC2. It's pretty much like the big power banks that like control the power grid. They let you hack into those there too. So I've gotten to try that and that was pretty fun. Um, I think the, the real question is like, what have I not gotten to hack into? Well, <laughs> I still haven't made a botnet yet. That's on the list of things I want to do, but I can't do it legally. And a botnet's pretty much like a, you infect like hundreds of thousands of computers and if you wanna like use all those computers for whatever you want, you create a botnet to give you access to all of them. They all communicate to like one computer that's their like god, master, overlord. You just tell them what to do and they do it. Whoa. Yeah, I want to do that. That'd be kind of fun. Whoa. Yeah, so I've pretty much like hacked in almost everything. I just got to like, I'm sorry to get to the end of the field. I feel like where like there's not much else to do um, other than going to like cryptography, which is like mathematics and maybe physics, mm -hmm. which is something I'm not really good at. <laughs> so... Yeah, cryptography and yeah have you like i guess it's harder like if you get into like blockchain and all that that's probably like it's yeah hard dude. to hack kind of stuff yeah i mean di like distributed databases isn't too hard to hack there's actually attacks for um like blockchains there's like the i want to say it's like the 80 percent attack which is pretty much like you take control over the entire blockchain mm -hmm. essentially um I think you like push, essentially all you do is like you push some malicious code onto a blockchain because it's pushed by a vote. Um, if they vote for the malicious code, you take over the entire blockchain and you just kill that blockchain. You sell everything off real fast, steal everyone's coins and sell it. Um, for yeah, like 51% attack. 51%, there you go, yeah. yeah. That's an awesome like attack vector. I think that's cool. Uh, what else is there? I've had one person actually do it to smaller chains um, that he just like didn't like. It's actually um, one of my bosses at my old job. Mm. He's a really cool dude as well. Um, you just hack some shit coins. Yeah, exactly. Wow. I mean, you just steal a bunch of it, and then they just shut down. Yeah. Like, it's not hard, usually. You can hack into, like, the distribution place, essentially, and just, like, take all of those, and now you own, like, the biggest portion of it. Yeah, like, I think Coinbase owns the biggest portion of Bitcoin and Litecoin and, like, some other, like, coins. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I don't know. I made a ton of money off that in high school, too. It worked out. Oh, really? Yeah, me and my friends were mining it in high school, and then, like, we stopped just because it was, like, ah, oh, you know, this, it was a good, like, fun math project, essentially. It was, like, how fast can we mine these blocks? Mm -hmm. 
right? And then how fast can we authenticate these blocks to see if they're real coins? Um, turns out pretty slow, <laughs> but still pretty fun to try. Um, the only reason we stopped legitimately, I think at the end was like, uh, we had some GPUs malfunction and just like die completely. So we sold those on eBay and somebody, some loser bought them. So we kind of scammed them, which is really scummy of us, but you know, teenagers, whatever. Um, <laughs> So I think like last year when Bitcoin went up to like 20K, mm -hmm. we were like, holy shit, does somebody have access to the fucking Bitcoin you mine? We had a ton of money in there. Mm -hmm. I was like, dude, I'm gonna buy a fucking house at this point. <laughs> <laughs> right, so yeah, like a shit, we're talking about like a shit ton of money. And then, um, so I withdrew it last year and then I got fucking screwed on my taxes this year. I was so sad. Jeez. I owe like half of that money back to the government now. Damn. Yeah, so. We'll see if they get that. <laughs> Jesus. I haven't hacked the IRS. I haven't hacked my credit. That would be cool, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a fucking savant like some people are. Like, there is, there's some people that talk about crazy stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I think that's the future, though. Like, hacking, like, bigger stuff, maybe. Mm -hmm. If I get into, like, a big enough group. Like, a bunch of smart dudes. Yeah. Yeah. How's skating and stuff? It's been going great, man. Um, I feel like Oak Park is so dead when it comes to skating now. It's so sad. I wish, dude, it, I wish like more people were actually skating, man. Yeah. Um, it's it's messed up. It's like there used to like be spots. There's like not even spots anymore, man. Yep. Yeah. So. It actually fucking sucks ass. I literally go to like, go to Fopo, nobody there anymore. Go to Stevenson, like a couple people there just because the helmet roll's gone. Yeah. Fucking go to like spots downtown. Nobody's skating these spots anymore. I see like random scrubs skating and they like suck ass and I'm like, well, at least you're at least you're doing it, man. Like yeah. I'm happy there's somebody out there skating. Like Dude, there's <laughs> been so many days where I'm just downtown all day skating and like we don't see anybody, anybody else. I swear, dude. It makes no sense. Oh my god. And then you have like Grant, which is cool, but like it's pretty bad. I fucking hate Grant so much now. I hated Grant actually since they put that fucking quarter pipe against the wall and then the box is like four feet away that sucks ass i had so many fun tricks i wanted to do on that i tried my backflip though i tried my backflip at wilson that shit did not work out it was awesome though. i had so much fun Damn. <laughs> i gotta attempt it again next summer probably i need to work out more for it for sure <laughs> for sure like i ate fucking shit i landed on my feet but i got lucky <laughs> Damn, that shit's fucking sounds insane. yeah I did. Wow. And I'm a big bull skater now. After I like broke my leg, fucking got hit by that car and was like, well, I'm only sticking to ramp stuff. Like, can't street skate anymore. Shit, I didn't even know you got hit by a car. Yeah, I fucking was on the way home from Terion's house, like after skating at Asylum at like some half pipe thing uh -huh. and got like a free board on my way home. I fucking like cross the street. This car like runs a red light and just fucking smashes me, dude. Jumped right before it hit me. I'll clip my leg. Did like a couple flips, hit the ground, had to wait for an ambulance. I thought my leg was fine. I tried to stand up and like fucking collapsed. Dude. I, was, I made it so much worse. Oh. Dude. Yeah. Whoa. So I have like a big scar from like here to here. I have like a bunch of other scars where they like put bolts in to like put the pipe into my leg to hold my bones together. Wow. Yeah, it was fucking crazy. It's a good time though. And fucking, I mean, not getting hit by a car, but like the like recovery after like going back into skating and like kind of starting from like scratch again was really fun. That, I, I thought that was awesome. It was like being in junior high school again, and like trying to skate. That was sick. That was a great time. Yeah. I think that's what pushed me more into like the academic side too because back then I was like, oh, I just want to skate. Like That's all I want to do. Fuck everything else. Yeah, that definitely pushed me more into like, there's some other stuff out there that isn't skating. That's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, dude, I need people to skate with. Skating with Nick is, like, fun, but he doesn't skate much anymore. I'm trying to get him to skate more, but we just don't hang out enough because he goes to UIC and I go to DePaul. Uh -huh. So it's just distance. I wish I could skate with Nick more, too, man. Shit. Yeah, dude, he's fucking awesome to skate with. He's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> we, like, skate Fopo and Wilson randomly. Do you know Kenton? I vaguely know him. He did, like, the 5-0 laser flip off the... Like, bench, he's fucking, like, crazy good now. He does, like, backside lay flips over the fucking hip at uh, Stevenson. He's nuts. Damn, at the pyramid. I don't 
I think I know him. Shit. Yeah, dude, you should skate with him for sure. Like, I think he, I don't know, he records with, like, Chuck and, um, fucking somebody else. Uh, JJ Powell, who's, like, some pro scooter kid. It's really funny, actually. We just meme on him all day. We're like, fuck you, scooter kid, at every park we go to. I don't know who Kitten is. Anyone who knows who Kitten is, comment. I don't know. <laughs> that Kitten's awesome. Tag him. Yeah. Um, Nick's a fucking loser. Fuck that kid. Nick, there's any bitch who needs to skate more, but it's all good. I'm going to skate. I, I, I don't know. He's a good bowler, though. He's a pro bowler. Practically. <laughs> like, I, mean, I might have to hear you, Nick, about bowling. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, right? Like, before he goes professional. <laughs> that could be pretty fun, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Nick, we brought you down here not to talk about your skateboarding, but to talk about your bowling. Yeah. <laughs> the real stuff. He's also he's also pretty good at uh, computer programming. Really? Yeah, he like has created like hardware stuff. I, UIC teaches like a hardware course. My school teaches like a networking and computer hacking course, mm-hmm. and we're like big rivals when we like go to competitions and stuff. I, although his team sucks usually, I hope he joins their team because he's way better than every other kid on their team. Um, he's making like. Fucking, he's, like, making his own door lock or something, like, smart door lock, I think, where you put your finger on it and it unlocks the door, and, like, he's trying to work with, like, Bluetooth stuff, maybe. I got to ask him about some hardware stuff. I suck at hardware stuff sometimes. Yeah, that would be really cool to get into. Make, like, a product and then sell it. That'd be awesome. Yeah. But, yeah. I try to make a skateboarding product where, like, you put this little computer on the bottom of your skateboard, do a kickflip, and it, like, tells you what trick you did. And then from there, it could, like, adjust your tricks or, like, tell you what to do to adjust your tricks, like, pop harder or something. Like, this is how far off the ground it got. And, like, we felt this in the air. This is how fast it spun. Like, things like that. I thought it was a cool idea. It's really hard to make, though. Yeah, I just need some pretty good sensors. Oh, we got we had all the sensors. I had, like, good gyroscope and stuff, all that. Damn. Yeah. It's just a matter of, like, translating the data. To, like, uh, it's, like, what data is useful mostly, yeah. It's mostly just about figuring that out. I have not cracked that at all. I suck at all that. I'm just good at breaking shit. <laughs> That's all I'm good at, dude. And just go into a place, fucking break a window. It's like hacking a computer, duh. <laughs> <laughs> Moving forward to hacking for the greater good. Eh, eh. <laughs> greater, greater good. <laughs> sure. Whatever is just like the funnest path, mostly. Like, whatever is funnier. I mostly just like hacking the stuff to like. So I think what, so the big reason me and my friends kind of stick with car hacking, we make money off of it, isn't because we make money off of it. Um, it's mostly because we can take an Xbox controller, connect it to the car, and then drive it with the fucking Xbox controller. No that way. shit is fucking hilarious to do. Or we can make the car like dance, open up all its doors and shit. It's awesome. Wow. I love doing that shit. It's so fun. Wow. Yeah. That is amazing. <laughs> but yeah. But those are this is only things that we're probably going to see more of in the future. Yeah, so I'm definitely going to post more about it too. Like I want to, but I'm not allowed to like take pictures of the things I'm attacking yet. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get to that point where like if I have enough status behind me, I can fucking just like do whatever I want, <laughs> like Elon Musk shit. <laughs> Which who I've also asked to hack into his car multiple times and he has not responded. Elon Musk, let me hack into your cars, please. I know you're fucking watching. Like the shit I do already, so. Let him hack a Tesla, man. For real, dude. You do. It'll be for your own benefit. I re- I've already had three friends do it, dude. Just come on. All right, yeah. Yep. I mean, it's gotta, it's gotta go down. Yeah, it has to. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask that question too, but it just kind of came up naturally, so. What, Elon Musk? If you're just gonna. If, if you've ever, like, hacked a Tesla or. Uh, so I, I have friends do it. I have a bunch of attacks that I know are gonna work. Um, and I just want to try them because I need a physical car to test it on. I don't want to buy a Tesla. I don't want to steal somebody else's because that's illegal. I could, but I don't want to. Um, I, have a, I have a couple of really fun ideas for it, and I haven't gotten to test them out yet. And I've asked him in person to do it, and he's, uh, he mostly gave me a response of like, ha ha, you're funny, not yet. And I was like, all right, well, fucking whatever. The company I actually um, let me hack the cars the first time, uh, they work with Tesla specifically. So I had one of them ask him, and they were like, it's in the works. And I'm like, yes. Heck yeah. I mean, persistence is key, man. Hell yeah, dude. It's like, man, this kid's asking so many times. Okay, fuck. Exactly, dude. 
So I, I already know like a bunch of attack vectors because they like they showed the manufacturing process of their Tesla in a video um, through like um, was it KPMG? The um, he's pretty much like a tech YouTuber. Um, he went to their factory and he was showing the manufacturing process, and I was like, "Holy shit! So that's how they install that. What are those wires over there? Wait, I know exactly what those wires are. I can steal almost every Tesla because those wires are exposed." I need to test that first. I don't have a car to do it on. <laughs> mm. I already know it's gonna work though, so it's like, I don't need to test it, I could just send them up right up and they'd probably be like, yeah, it's legitimate, and we know it's there, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so, that'd be cool. This stuff is all so foreign to me, and I'm sure it's foreign to like 99% of the people who are gonna be watching this. Oh, I guess I should also add a disclaimer. Car hacking and like general hacking is stupid easy. There are so many things out there that make it stupid fucking easy. You know, like a little bit of programming. I'm not the best programmer. I don't get straight A's in school. I have a full ride through college, though, thank God. But um, hacking anything is just like pretty fucking simple if you like put your mind to it and read a couple of books on it. And uh, mostly assembly books about like how computers work. Anything with reverse engineering helps. Yeah. The crowd shout out, out here making videos. Yeah, any, any shout outs. <laughs> the crowd, oh, gang God. shit, <laughs> hack the planet. That's the that's a hacking group I'm in. Oh wait, actually, I think I have the card in my pocket. Sweet. <laughs> it's not really a, it's not a legit card. It's just like kind of a fucking meme. Oh, it's not in here. That's sad. It's like the coolest thing I own. Fuck, that sucks. Well, this is the thing to unlock the underground skate park this is my key for it you just slide it in between the uh between the door and it pulls on the lock they installed their locks backwards fucking dumb asses Dude. yeah um i had some cool cards i'll find them next time send you a picture of them it's pretty much just like an antenna and it, when it goes through the airport um an x-ray will hit it and then it'll blast a middle finger up at the x-ray oh my God. like yeah so it'll magnify a middle finger up on the screen and i usually get asked to fucking step aside and they frisk me and shit Damn. <laughs> it's pretty funny it's like the best you can see like the it's a, just an antenna and it like takes power just from like the energy from the x-ray it's really fucking funny yeah one of my friends made that from thug crowd it's pretty it's pretty sick but yeah yeah, any other any other questions? I mean, wow, I mean, it's just like, you're just doing it for fun. <laughs> it's amazing, dude. Yeah, it's fun, dude. It's like, amazing. Yeah, I don't, I mean, like, there's money in it. Like, I guess that's a reason to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's it's great that it's just, like, something that you just think is fun and, like, you're just yeah, dude. keeping it going <laughs> and it's becoming something completely unexpected yeah it's it's been pretty great so far everyone i've met so far too is like super nice really chill um pretty fucking great dudes like all the dudes from the the hacking group thug crowd are just like the coolest fucking people ever like i go in there and i like talk shit and then they just like come up with awesome like ideas and projects to work on and then we just do like there's uh, these fun competitions called ctfs again um which pretty much like hack something get a flag whatever, like, break a code on something, get a flag. Mm -hmm. um, doing that with them and just, like, drinking beers is pretty fun. Um, there's, um, there's a great one, and I think one of our members is actually in this competition every year. Um, it's, hacking, it's hacking history, and uh, if you answer questions wrong, you lose points. If you answer questions right, you don't lose any points. Mm -hmm. And if you don't answer the question, you don't lose points, but you don't gain points either somehow. Uh, so they go up on stage at Vegas and they just drink beers the entire time, and they get asked questions, they just go, <laughs> don't say anything, and they usually win every year, so it's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Those guys are awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. But yeah, yeah so that, yeah, that's pretty much what I do. Everyone follow this guy on Instagram, follow Nico. Um, there's, there could be a very um, you know, interesting update in the future. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there will be. Hacking cars or planes. That'd yeah. Be fun. Satellites. Trains. Spaceships. Yeah. Fucking aliens. Hacking the aliens. <laughs> Hacking aliens. Bringing them here. Master, <laughs> master blaster. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anything is possible. You heard the man. Yeah. 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 Yep. That's great. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, man. That was fun.